Many of you remind me time and again what a long way the law school has come in these 40 years. It grew from a new school that was founded in 1970 with no alumni and no name recognition. In just a few years, it had become a truly formidable academic powerhouse. Uh, Klepper, which is the Ford Foundation financed arm to encourage uh, clinical education around the country. Pincus was the president of it, a man named Pincus. He came and he visited the uh, clinic, which was in a small office above a fish store in Hempstead. And uh, he liked what he saw, and he wrote up, uh, rather, he had David Cadane write an article for their magazine that they distributed routinely to faculty all across the country. And 5,000 copies went out extolling uh, the Hofstra Clinic as a, a model for other schools. Now, in the years after those initial founding days, the pioneer spirit obviously had to recede, and the school settled into its 20s and 30s. That's the time when it truly begins to share in the successes of its alumni. It benefits from the reputation that the faculty has built for itself and for the school as a whole. One of the things I'd like to say is that I had it very easy. Maliki did all the hard work in three years, which I, I think is a, is a record that stands alone. In three years, he got full accreditation for this law school. I just wanted to say that when I came to the school originally, the school was still struggling to find its place as one of the leading learning uh, institutions of law in the state of New York. And I think that all of us now are so, so proud that we picked Hofstra as our first choice to go to law school. The school has done immense things. I, I truly never remember anyone thinking, at least back in my time, that anything was beyond our reach. I, I really mean that. I mean, we got together and we just assumed we could be the best law school in the country eventually. You know, we always set our sights on being excellent and being the best. And that's why I think we've come so far in what is a very short time for law schools. Most of all, I'm, I'm proud of our students. We got some really exceptional people here and they have become superb lawyers. And that is what I am most proud of. Here is the vision for the future. Our world is not the same as it was 40 years ago when the law school was founded. At that point, the founding dean, Malachi Mayen, knew what he wanted. He wanted a national law school. Today, that's not enough. So you really have to think about questions of conflicts of laws, um, questions of choice of law in a much more global way. You have to think about whether there are international treaties that govern any of the actions that you have to take. And therefore, it's really important to think about the existence of foreign sources of law, international sources of law, and also to be able to act in this world. That means you have to understand how foreign lawyers are being trained, what kind of a socializations they undergo while being in law school or being practicing lawyers. We truly need a school that thinks about the international and global implications and also drives to us scholars and students from around the world. We are now in the second year of our professional development boot camp series. We have um, asked every first year student this year to go through a set of four professional development classes. Now, it's been incredibly successful. The students have gained insights into the markets and had the opportunity to take away real knowledge, business writing skills, emotional intelligence understanding, communication, which is so crucial to everyone's interaction, especially to the work of a lawyer. All of those are skills that have been honed in those two days. We all know that legal need is up, but many people cannot pay for lawyers. That happens these days all the time in bankruptcies, but it's also true for custody disputes, divorces, and many other cases. And here is the goal, a postgraduate civil justice center. 
It would make us the first law school in the country to have thought seriously about postgraduate training and moving it really back into the realm um, of law schools that are pairing it with meeting the unmet needs of the community. We could fulfill these needs, at least in part, by allowing and funding recent graduates of Hofstra Law School to provide the services that the constituents need while at the same time getting under supervision the training that will make them fabulous lawyers as they're going into their second year of practice, this time either in the private sector, the government sector, or the not-for-profit area. LLT Lab trains students in dealing with facts and fitting facts together with the legal rule in a very structured, logical way. So often the first time students encounter raw facts is when they go out into the practice of law. And the LLT Lab brings all of this back to an earlier point. It makes the students think about the logical connections between rules and makes them apply the facts to those rules. And I do think this kind of a training will pay dividend as they go out into the job market and ultimately into the practice of law. One of my goals from the start has been to involve our alumni more. They have been incredibly successful in their professional ventures, and many of them feel true devotion to the law school. And our students need every help that they can get in a very competitive job market. And our alumni have exactly what it takes to help them, namely the wisdom of years of practice. And it is that knowledge that I ask them to share with our current students and with applicants to the law school.